Hello and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. We are so glad you could join us. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Zero malaria is the dream of the WHO. Can this be achieved? Well, progress in the fight against malaria since 2000 has afforded a 58% reduction in malaria mortality and saved more than 6.2 million lives from 20, 2001 to 2015. China joined El Salvador to report no indigenous malaria cases in 2017. These are significant achievements. Yet, the World Health Organization reports that after a 10-year period, gains against malaria have leveled off in the period between 2015 and 2017. Malaria is a life-threatening uh, is a life-threatening disease caused by the Anopheles mosquito, but it is curable and it is preventable. WHO is now in partnership with Rollback Malaria for a high-burden, high-impact initiative to accelerate progress against malaria. My guest is, chi is the Chief Research Fellow at the Nigerian Institute of medical research and a member of the Institutional Technical Support Committee, is that Technical Support Committee or Support Technical Committee for the National Malaria Elimination Program. She is Dr. Diola Olukosi. You're welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Mary. Let me just ask this question that I, you know, came to my mind immediately. I saw stats about malaria. Why have we stalled? What is stalling the progress? The biggest um, staller is funding. Yes, um, straight to the point, it's funding. There are other external factors, um, factors including political willpower, and, um, but the biggest of them is funding. Um, Nigeria, the endemic countries have so much um, resources to put into trying to reverse malaria as it ought to be reversed. Yes. Most of the funding comes from outside the country. So the funders with so much competing interests um, are beginning to go weary and um, funding is not coming in as so it, it was. funding actually reduced. Fund, funding has reduced. Between 2015 and 2017, and look what it did. Yeah. The calculated um, estimates that is required to reverse the um, accelerating prevalence of malaria is about, was estimated to be about 3.3 billion okay. in 2000, 2015. But with the Millennium Development Goals transiting to Millennium Sustainable Goals and um, efforts winning on the goal four or five yeah. um, to work on malaria, TB, and HIV, yeah. um, those multiple incomes to tackle malaria have rescinded and um, gone into is, other yes, places, I yes, suppose. Yes, gone into other places. That's one of the reasons. What with this high impact, high burden plan? What does that mean? High impact, high burden um, of malaria? That's right. Because that's what the WHO says, you know, in partnership with Rollback Malaria, they are saying they are going into this high impact, high burden plan as yes. a new drive to bring the numbers down or, or you know, on malaria incidents. Okay, so the targets have transited all the time. With the rollback malaria plants um, getting, stall, not stalling, but transiting from being rolled back malaria into other targeted um, events. There's been the Global Malaria Action Plan. There's uh, the Technical Strategy for Malaria um, um, Action for Malaria. There's all those, all those themes have come up over and over with um, different people coming on board the UN. So those targets have changed, but the 
the overall um, global plan has continued to be eliminate malaria in countries, eradicate it from all over the world. But we know that malaria has been there for so long. Uh, malaria is treatable, curable, and preventable, like you pointed out. But because it has adapted, the parasite has adapted so well, um, getting rid of it, it, it takes a lot more than just um, treating it, for example. Yes. For example, it, 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 theoretically, if you, if you treated malaria the world over for three days, which is um, for three weeks, which is the length of... Um, um, about the length of a mosquito's lifespan, and um, everybody simultaneously then would be rid of malaria. But how is possible that right? is that? Yes, it's not feasible that you will treat everybody simultaneously for three weeks. It's not, it's that not, is a huge yes. cost. So, um, what is a nice thought, you know? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not about to happen, I promise you. But um, you have to, we have to be persistent, we have to be insistent, because with each stalling, you know, it takes us back so many years. And, yes. you know, value for money that has been spent up to the extent at which it starts to rescind is, is a lot of waste. What did, what did China do and El Salvador? In 2017, those, well, in 2017, China reported no new indigenous cases. And El Salvador has been reporting that since, I think, 2014. What did they do? Um, they probably had a better concerted effort, political willpower. With China, Quite a bit of China is also in the temperate region, don't okay, forget that. That helps. Yes, so um, it's easier to tailor and um, focus on hot spots. And with El Salvador, um, it's concerted effort, political willpower, and um, um, agreements with neighboring countries that this is our focus, this is our target, we will get there. And they did. But, but there are reports that, that India that, yes. is well on its way to 40% elimination. There's, so there's something they are doing that we are not doing. It's concerted effort. It's government commitment, political willpower. Uh, uh, um, the capacity of the, the willpower of the government to put funds in place to um, complement whatever it is that is coming from outside. From outside. Yes. So it's focus, it's political willpower, it's funding. So what would you say is the position of Nigeria now? Are, are we, are we uh, is our pol polity sensitized enough and, you know, gingered, should I say, enough to go after this? We are actually, the records don't indicate maybe how well we are doing. We are actually um, not as badly off as um, the papers say. Okay. But that, I say that with a lot of caution. I don't want to give a wrong impression to the powers that be. Um, we can do a lot better. Okay. The right monies need to be available at the right times. You know, with the laps, with the gaps for, say, one year, okay. you slow down, it will come right back. Remember, Garki was a project that was um, there in, in the 60s. Um, by London School of Hygiene and of Tropical Medicine, yes, and a consolidated um, efforts from, of scientists from, from um, a very technical um, uh, schools. And they did a good job. Agarki, though, what became apparent, and it's a, an example the world knows and refers to up till today, is that malaria is all the efforts will drive it down. But with driving it down, more efforts need to be put in place. Increasing efforts need to be put in place to drive it all the way out. Otherwise, okay. it will go back, right back to what it used to be, the prevalence, the severity, the burden, and maybe even worse. And that's happened in, in, in the Americas. In all of uh, the US and America, United States of America and the America, America South America. Um, they had a resurgence. Yes. 
most of America now has, I mean, South America now. Except for has, Paraguay. Yes. Paraguay well. is okay. Well, Paraguay and um, El Salvador you're talking about. Yeah. Um, most of them have resurged to the typical tropical prevalence of malaria. Uh, that's and this it. is all so, because... Yeah. They just relaxed on it for yes, a short they, while. They relaxed. Maybe concentrated monies in other places. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the I, secret is don't rest on your oars then. Don't rest on your oars. Another thing that works well for countries that have done well is that um, the standard of life increases and it's, it, it, it um, just drives malaria down. Okay. For example, even in Nigeria, the urban cities, the urban sites, don't have malaria budding as bad as in the interiors. Is that because of, when you say standard of life, is that because of nutrition or is it because of surroundings? Surrounding, good housing, good health care, strengthened laboratory services, um, good environmental care, vector management, you know, prevent. The, the health factor, the health content is there, but also the the human dignity your capacity to meet needs when as at, at, as they come yes, up as at when do okay so now that we have this this initiative of who and roll back malaria have funds been made available for this continued fight or should i say this this uh, um, increased effort as they call it to get malaria down in nigeria as a who nation <laughs> I'm not in a position to answer that question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what I know we encounter is um, counterpart, counterpart funding mm. isn't, um, isn't easily av available. Okay. So we find the global funds um, diminishing, but they're still coming in. The government's meeting them halfway and providing um, equivalent fund to, to make things work. It's not easily as available as yet. But there is some effort. Now, let's talk about this Zero Malaria Starts With Me, which is the theme of this year's World Malaria Day. How does it start with me? We've been talking a lot about the government now. So who's me? And, and what, how does it start? So for um, personal care, you can do a lot. Uh, education is important. Knowing what you can do to prevent malaria is, um, is uh, pertinent to control. You need to know and be willing to do the right things. It's one thing for you to, to know. It's another thing for you to, to do. That's why the BCC components, behavioral change communications components of um, these control programs are as important as the actual... Um, the actual knowledge. Control yes. programs. Yes, you mm -hmm. need to do. LLINs are there, they are available. Okay. But how many of us use it? I, do I use it? Do I, you? <laughs> do you? <laughs> <laughs> knowing all, how important it is and knowing how, how, how well it can help to, to keep me. malaria yes. at bay. And it, you see, it's not just one person using it now. There's the head effort. There's the head um, uh, effect of it. So when a whole community or most of the community yes, are using the net. The nets, you know, the effort becomes, it carries way beyond what's the, the sum. Mm. It goes, it's progressive, it's cumulative. It's multiplied. Yes, it, okay, it's multiplied. Let, let's quickly take a break and come back to that. We, we are taking a break right now. We'll be back shortly. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Malaria concerns you. It concerns me. It concerns the world. The number to call if you want to ask a question about malaria is 0808-054-2233. That's 0808-054-2233. You can also tweet at, CT, at CTV underscore Mary A as we continue the discussion. You were telling us about what 
zero malaria starts with me mean, means. And so far, we've talked about the uh, long-lasting insecticide-treated nets. What else can we do? Um, for pregnant women, for example, they should attend um, the antenatal clinics okay. and so that they can participate in the preventive prevention program that's put in place for, call it preventive malaria in pregnancy. Uh, Are they shots or tablets? Yeah, they're tablets. You okay. take a course of, a full course of um, treatment of primetamine sulfadoxin in nine months. And you take them every other month. You take them every other month after quickening. And that's... Okay. Yes, it puts, it prevents malaria parasites from sitting, that you enjoy, you seem to enjoy sitting in the placenta bed. Um, is, this an, is this a new policy? No, not at all. It's been uh, there since 2005. Okay. Yes. And um, quick is 16 weeks, right? Or 12 seven, weeks. 12 weeks. 12 weeks. So, so every after. other month after that, yes, every, they take it. Yes. So you, you are expected to take a course. If you're pregnant, you are expected to take a course of um, primetamine sulfadoxin, that's so fancy that. Mm -hmm. But that's a trade name. Um, three courses of it. Complete courses, course of treatment in the nine months of pregnancy. And this has been shown to work. It, I, I thought those things were contraindicated for pregnant women. No, not after three months. Not after three months. Oh, not I after see. three months, yes. Okay, it's the timing. Yes, and um, it's, it's done. It's available in all the health facilities. And um, it's taken under direct observation. Of is the it clinic. free? It, it, Yes, it is free. In Lagos State, I'm sure it's free. Co talking about direct ob observation, have you had problems with people uh, compliance to to uh, drug regimes for malaria? Well, yes, that is not unlikely to happen, especially if because this um, could bring up issues of resistance. Yes, it's it's. These are the things that we talk about. It begins with you. You, there's what we call the rational use of drugs. You okay. need to comply. You need to use the full cost of the treatment. Malaria is there's a there's a theme that we run: test, treat, and trap. Okay. You 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 get tested since the universal upgrade. Since we the world went el elimination eradication, we the plants have been to apply all the control plans to everybody. Yes, before, we used to focus on children and pregnant there. women. For just a second, yeah. we need to take a call from Benny Ball in Port Harcourt. Hello. Hello. What's your question, Hello. Benny Ball? OK, please. We're talking about zero malaria. That's right. I, I have noticed over time that next time I carry out a test, I still find malaria parasites, okay. with the mosquito nets and all of that. I want to know what's the best treatment for malaria for us to be able to achieve zero malaria. Yeah, I get you, Denido, but can I ask you what test do you do? Okay. What test do you usually do? Sorry? What test do you do? They okay, just take your blood that. and call you back later. Okay, test of blood, yeah. All right, okay, I'll, I'll let the doctor get to that. Ca can we talk about that? Malaria parasites always being present in the blood. Is this a normal thing? Uh, that's, not, that's not normal. Not anymore. Not Gone anymore. Are the days, no, not anymore. Gone are the days when every fever you see is um, a result of malaria. In this day and time, you need to check by RDT, rapid diagnostic tests for malaria, or by microscopy. Unfortunately, microscopy, which is the gold standard for testing malaria, is not readily available because you need to be sure of the um, microscopists uh, and so many other factors that are important in making sure that you get the correct and um, yes results from microscopy. So, because this is a problem that is that is. Um, um, Prevalent? Yes, in the endemic countries. The scientists went out to find this rapid diagnosis, which is a bedside um, diagnostic test. Which takes it's how long? It's easy, 20, 30 minutes. 
So it's easy to use, it takes little skill, it doesn't need any infrastructure, and it's, um, it's, it's, it's easy. It really is easy. So rapid Let's diagnostic tests. Let's quickly take this call from Mrs. Opara. Hello. Hello, Mr. Opara. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, I'm so happy for this discussion. Thank what you. is the place of, I have a question to ask. Mm -hmm. What is the place of uh, environmental sanitation authority? Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Yes. What's the place of environmental sanitation in this, in this whole discussion? Okay, so the last question. Mm -hmm. You need to be sure that you actually have malaria. Adults don't come down so easily with malaria anymore. Okay, so if you live in the rural area, we're coming to the environmental sanitation okay. bits now. If you live in the rural area where mosquitoes are more prevalent, then it's maybe a little easier to have malaria. But if it's an environment that you have lived in for a long time, even at that, it's not easy for an adult because repeated exposures to Malaria, a yes, measure of to, immunity. To, yes, again, because malaria is a disease that is acquired slowly over time. Okay. Not like smallpox or chickenpox or measles where you get the immunity, you get one bite and uh, uh, you are immune for life. Malaria, the, the immunity is built increasingly over time. So um, environmentally, just so not to have your system assaulted with over and over again, by, mal by mosquito bites, and then to be repeatedly challenged, you can avoid it if you can. Keep your environment clean. Avoid stagnant water, you know. Because it, they breed there? Or yes, what? because the mosquito, the female anopheles mosquito, which needs a blood meal to mature its egg, is also the one that carries mosquitoes, uh, is also the one that carries the parasites. It's we need to take this call quickly from Adeni. It will be the last, and then we can go. Hello, Adeni. Are you there? Yeah, good afternoon, madam. What's your question? Yeah, I'm fine. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, please. I, the, 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 your program is a very good program. And, um, Thank you. What about what is that? Sometimes we go free net, mosquito net, but it has so many people in Lagos. Say. But you know the living condition in Lagos, you can't put some mosquito net where the leper is not regular. Under heat, so most we have access to some of us in our private homes. So what can we, or how can government address this? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Adeni. Let me ask the doctor, since she asked herself, do I use mosquito nets? What can he do to, to stay free from mosquito bites and from malaria if he feels too hot to have any? I say, I say take off your clothes, yeah. I mean, and, yeah. and sleep under that yeah. net. Yeah. But, but what do you say? Mosquito nets, sleep under them. <laughs> if you want so to avoid, no choice there. Yeah, if you want to avoid mosquito bites, sleep under the mosquito nets. They are the best value for money mosquito malaria prevention uh, mechanism that is. That but how is about available. spraying the house and then netting the windows and the door? All of that those could help. help. All of those help. But um, the best, the most effective that prevents man mosquito contact is still the long-lasting insecticide, the um, LLINs. Okay, so we need to go now, but just before we go, uh, I just want to quickly refer to what Denedor said about malaria parasite being in the blood. I think what he was referring to is that even after being treated, just because you're an African or because you're a Nigerian, there's a little bit of the parasite in the blood. Is that true? Mm, that's not all the time. Okay, but that's good. There, 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 it is true that we have malaria parasites that don't give any symptoms. Okay. I'll have to go yeah. at this point. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think his question has been answered. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming and giving such a stimulating discussion uh -huh. on malaria. And thank you so much for being there with us, letting us into your homes, asking all those lovely questions. Enjoy the rest of your day. I am Mary Alale Yusuf.